I got to say, after watching, actively watching the House of Commons and parliamentary debates and committee hearings, it's not really that difficult to get Trudeau to snap and go insane or to even make a mockery of him on the federal uh, or on the national level of different broadcasts. But when it does happen, it's very enjoyable and it sucks because it's double-edged sword, right? Trudeau gets embarrassed or he gets completely destroyed or he even has a meltdown and literally walks out and it's funny but what's not funny is he's the leader of this country and he's kind of the the judge and juror for a lot of things which is not how it's supposed to be but he's positioned himself to be that way and that's what's not so funny about it but i mean you sometimes have to laugh when you have no other option it's either laugh or cry that seems to be the state of canada welcome back to another video everybody before we get into it i want to encourage you all to smash the like button and subscribe if you haven't yet already it does really help grow the channel we're almost at a hundred thousand subscribers here on house canada which is absolutely in insane and what else is insane is this sticker right here which is available for purchase down in the description wtf says pierre polyev while he was wearing uh i guess while he was wearing glasses to trudeau where's the funds is what it stood for not what the f all right so uh, we're going to take a look at a bit of an older video right now of Pierre Polyev absolutely obliterating Justin Trudeau. And you know it's a bit of an older video because he has his glasses on just like he does in the sticker here. So sit back, relax, hit the like button if you haven't yet. And I hope you enjoy this clip as much as I enjoy it because it's, it's funny. It's either laugh or cry about the state of Canada. And I, I choose laugh, at least right now. Hope you enjoy it. Disease control revealed today that it now costs over $1,200 a month for a basket of nutritious food for the average family in that province. This is an explosion of costs yeah. that have taken place under this prime minister. Those numbers come from a year ago, and the same report says the high prices are higher still now. Now the prime minister's solution for that is a 61 cent a litre carbon tax. They'll push gas prices well over $2 a litre and increase the cost to farmers and truckers who bring us our food. How much will that increase the cost of food for Canadians? The right honourable prime minister. Speaker, we've seen the extents to which, not just for the past seven and a half years, but for the decade before that, Conservatives refused to take the fight against climate change seriously, refused to accept that the cost to Canadians from coast to coast to coast would increase, get increasingly large as the years went on. Well, uh, over the past seven years, Mr. Speaker, we have stepped up in the fight against climate change, including with a price on pollution that puts more money back in the pockets of eight out of ten Canadians. We're going to continue to step up with a grocery rebate uh, to help with Canadians with the high costs of food. We're going to continue creating good jobs. We're going to continue being all leader of the opposition. Their carbon tax is not an environmental plan. It is a tax plan. It has done nothing to meet any targets. And yep. It's done nothing to reduce the cost of climate change. What it has done is increase the cost of food, because when you tax the farmers who make the food and the truckers who ship the food, then you tax the food itself. Now, the mm -hmm. plan is not to triple the carbon tax, but to quadruple the wow. carbon tax. Well, he adds more and more, 61 centiliters. So my question is, how much will his 61 centiliter carbon tax add to the monthly basket of food for Canadians? How much? The right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, once again, we see that uh, the leader of the official opposition is uh, not willing to let the facts get in the way of a great political argument. And even then, <laughs> it's not that a great an argument, Mr. Speaker. You're done, buddy. Sticker that he can stick on to, to scare Canadians with. Uh, the reality is we are delivering uh, with dental benefits, uh, with a, a grocery rebate, and with a carbon price that is putting more money back in the pockets of 8 out of 10 Canadians. Uh, Mr. Speaker... Uh, while he continues to cross his arms and vote against things like the dental benefit, we've delivered on 1,100 kids in his riding uh, dental benefits that have made a real difference. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, if the facts that I have just quoted from the BC Centre for Disease Control are false, then, then maybe he can tell me what the real numbers are. I've asked him, and given that he wants to bring in a 61 cent a litre carbon tax. Increase gas and diesel prices by 61 cent a litre on the farmers that produce the food and the truckers that bring it to the grocery store. How much 
will that tax increase add to the monthly cost of groceries for the average Canadian family? How much? Yeah. Right, honorable. Simple question. What Canadians know clearly is the inaction by a decade of a Conservative government and the continued resistance of Conservatives to take action on fighting climate change is costing them incredible amounts. How many uh, homes have been lost in Nova Scotia? How many people affected and evacuated across Alberta? How many people in the Northwest Territories affected now in New Brunswick? People in Central Canada worried about forest fires coming there in the coming weeks and months. The reality is extreme weather events are getting more and more expensive for Canadians, which is why we need to continue to lead on climate change while supporting Canadians. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, it's a tax plan. those things have happened with this carbon tax in place. Yeah. <laughs> has done nothing to reduce emissions, let alone to stop storms and other weather events. So that is nothing more than another act from this Prime Minister. Let's get back to the question. My question was very specific. We know now that a British Columbia family has to spend $1,200 a month on groceries just to feed their kids. He wants to raise the tax up to 61 cents a litre on the farmers and truckers who bring us our food. How much will that add to the grocery bill of an average family? How much? Holy shit, man. Only one person cares about this country, and it's Pierre right now. Leader of the opposition. He is in love with the sound of his own voice and his own attacks, but he doesn't actually check the facts. Oh, look at Pierre just dying right above me. <laughs> Have you ever seen a country's leader not give a shit about the people in the country? Because that's what's happening right now. I want to encourage everybody also to give a like in the live stream if you haven't already. We're almost at 200 likes and there's almost 1,500 people watching. So if you're logged in and you drop a like, we might be able to just skyrocket past 200 and hit 300 likes. It's free to do. The right honourable Prime Minister from the top, please. Mr. Speaker's going to walk out. I really feel like he will. Here is the issue with the leader of the opposition, who's so in love with the sound of his own voice that he doesn't check <laughs> the facts. Mr. This is so embarrassing for Trudeau. Our price on pollution, when the reality is. BC has its own price on pollution. The federal backstop doesn't even apply in BC. Uh, he is uh, mixing everything uh, for political arguments, for partisan attacks to try and scare Canadians, and to cover for the fact that he has no plan to fight climate change, or has no plan uh, for the future of the Canadian economy. Well, member. Oh, come on. The Robinson Dakota First Nations hasn't had a proper school in a long time. I've been to the school. Students are forced to learn in portables. They don't have proper running water, don't have heating and cooling in the winter and in the summer. And the school itself has a roof that's caving in. There's black mold everywhere. This is often the reality for First Nations and Indigenous kids. Will? I have to ask. I want Jagmeet to just get up and say, coalition over. <laughs> We're calling a snap election. And then Pierre gets up and says, yeah. Block gets up and says, yeah. Calm down and be quiet while we listen to whoever's asking. And then he walks out. Answering the question. The Honourable Member for Burnaby South from the top, please. Wapiton, Dakota First Nations hasn't had a properly functioning school in a long time. I visited the First Nations and I saw the school. They have to operate in portables. The portables don't have proper heating and cooling. These portables don't have running water in the winter. I went to the school itself and the building main structure, the roof is caving in and there's black mold. This is often the reality for indigenous children in our country. So when will this prime minister take this matter seriously and ensure that this First Nation has a proper school so indigenous kids can learn in a safe and secure surrounding? Here, here. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. 
Speaker, I agree with my honourable colleague. Uh, we need to do more. We have built hundreds of new schools across this country and in Indigenous communities uh, over the past uh, seven and a half years, but there is much more to do. We will continue uh, to work hand in hand with Indigenous peoples on record investments, uh, on partnerships to build schools, health centres, senior centres, uh, to solve outstanding land claim issues, to install boil water, uh, sorry, uh, to install wastewater uh, and uh, water treatment plants, to ensure uh, drinking drinking water across this country. These are things that we're doing and we're continuing to do, and I appreciate the member opposite's hard work on bringing them forward as well.